Hey everybody, so this is an electrostatic motor. Now it's actually by Johan, it's 3D printed and you can see what it is. It's a rotor made out of a few fins and a stator with a couple of fins covered in copper. And that's the thing about electrostatic motors, they're almost invariably really simple things. It's one of those school kid projects where you put a cup on a pencil. They're stunningly easy to make and to get them going, all you actually do is connect them to a high voltage supply. You put a high voltage positive and negative on and they spin like Billy O. And they're just fascinating things coming in a whole range of styles and there's a whole load of ways of supplying it with that high voltage. Now they need next to nothing in terms of sub-amps. You're talking about micro-amps to pico-amps. What they really need is a stunningly high voltage. Arguably, one of the earliest electrostatic motors was the Benjamin Franklin wheel, and it was basically a bunch of thimbles on a wheel. And it worked because electric charges are just like magnets. Like charges will repel, and unlike charges will attract. And if you have a high voltage negative and a high voltage positive, they'll attract each other. And all electrostatic motors work in this way. So, where to get that high voltage? Well, one way is with the high voltage supply, obviously. Plug it in and you'll generate yourself a high voltage supply. Another way is to pull it from the air. The Earth is basically a big old ball of electrons and bombarded with cosmic rays, the atmosphere is full of positively charged ions that basically drift towards the Earth. And that creates a situation where the Earth is considered to be zero and every metre up or so you get a hundred volt difference. So one metre is a hundred, two metres is two hundred and this extends to the upper atmosphere about 31 miles or 50 kilometres or so. So that voltage difference is huge. Unfortunately the amps isn't very big, it's about 10 picoamps per square metre or something like that. But it accounts for that difference in voltage as you go up metre by metre. Now, of course, we stand about two metres high, we've got plenty of buildings at hundreds of metres high, and this doesn't happen to them because they're standing on the ground. So they create a zone around them that is zero in respect to the ground because they're standing on the ground and they're a good enough conductor for that. But that just bends around. It still holds true that that thing is happening. So as we go higher, we get an incredibly high voltage. Now, if you're thinking you can use this to run a motor, you would not be alone. And there are lots of experiments. Basically, all you really do is stick a wire up there and you can do it with a drone or a balloon or some way of getting a wire high enough to get a good voltage. Stick the other side of the motor into the ground, so you've got your positive and your negative side, and you get a motor. You get the kind of motors like um, Rimstar Org made with his Corona motor. And these motors will turn. One issue with them being is they don't have a lot of torque. Or at least that was the conventional wisdom. <laughs> so irritatingly enough, Laser Saber came along and developed an atmospheric electricity driven motor that was powerful enough to use as a drill. So a huge amount of torque. And then of course you've got people like Olev Jeframenko who's worked on this and done some amazing work in the 60s and another company who produced an electrostatic motor called the C-Motive. So inside a C-Motive machine there are some plates, a rotor and a stator, put a high voltage on them and the rotors are going to spin. Now changing the voltage allows more torque to be delivered. But the plate itself, well the stator is just plus and minus a high voltage and that creates an electric field. Now the stator is very similar but it has A, B and C like a three phase applying a high voltage sine wave onto it causes it to rotate pulling it along and this number of stators and rotors determine that. Chances are you knew about atmospheric electricity and if you didn't well you do now and the bulk of it actually comes from cosmic radiation. You have to remember the sun alone provides 122 million 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 watts of power daily bathing the earth and this has been there free for the taking by basically sticking a wire up high enough. The problem up to date has been the way of using it. They have, to be honest, been a little wimpy. But that's kind of all changed. 
I mean, take your hat off to Laser Saber for creating an Atmo motor that can drill a hole. That's pretty impressive. And then, of course, C Motive have been working on that with quite powerful machines. So, at the moment, we're all worried about energy. Uh, not particularly, because I think there are lots of really excellent and hopeful things going on. We're on the verge of these massive breakthroughs. Of course, that doesn't mean we can sit back and do nothing. We won't make the breakthroughs unless we work on avenues that look exciting and interesting and can possibly answer our problems and give us a solution. And atmospheric energy is extremely promising. So if you thought that it was wimpy, a bit useless and a bit of a scientific curiosity, turns out you really should have thought again. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like, subscribe and click the bell notifications.